So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is the Country Snow Window Afghan. So this is a design by me, designed actually many years ago and um, it was really quite a neat idea. I really like the idea of larger granny squares because you can, you just have to do a few of them and not like a whole whack, meaning a lot. So in this particular blanket there's only nine squares that are used for this but the, the squares are massive so I have that to show you today. So this afghan is going to measure 65 inches by 65 inches and it's actually really neat and it has Jacob's Ladder concepting uh, concept in this. So this is using Bernat Blanket but now that it's 2021 Red Heart has been purchased by Yarnspirations and so I questioned whether the main interior would be different if it was done in Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. So that's what I, my goal was today. So I have actually decided to show you a new sample that is using Red Heart Super Saver instead. Now I don't know how much yarn is gonna be taken for that because I haven't done a whole blanket but I do have uh, three squares already done and you can get your eyes on that to see if that's something that's of interest to you. So when you're going to look at this particular pattern is that there is some instructions here that we have. So you have the joining. It's a join as you go so there's no sewing involved because I know how much you love that. <laughs> and also there's a crochet diagram available for the main square itself and then the joining section is not been diagrammed here but it's actually pretty straightforward and we'll be covering that today. There's also a main border for this and so we'll be covering that too. And let me show you the actual prototype of this because when I did this I actually made a square in advance which I still have. I still have this blanket actually to be honest with you. And uh, what I would like to do is to show you how big that is and then I'll cross compare it with the Super Saver and you can decide what works for you. So now you can see all the crap on my desk. <laughs> so what we have here, this is a massive square and I've forgotten how big this thing is but I will take a quick measurement for you today. And so it is 20 inches um, in square. You will also notice that it kind of has a little bit of a rounded edge to it and that's because of the way that it's being done with the Jacobs. And so you end up with this beautiful centerpiece and then you end up um, being able to Jacobs ladder the, the rest of the colors. Looks like I spilled some wax on this thing. So this thing has been around the block a little bit. So the other side of it here is just completely flat. You can still see I have the note from Yarn Inspirations when I sent it in for photography. And uh, this is actually a really neat idea. So let me show you the actual um, Super Saver version because this is what I was working on until one in the morning <laughs> last night. And look at the difference of the sizing. So it's much smaller. So let's take a look at what the sizing would be. And so the sizing with the frame is 12 inches. So it goes from uh, 20 inches down to 12. And again I don't know how much yarn you're going to need but I'm um, just play with the colors and chances are you probably have spare yarn. So today's tutorial I'm gonna show you how to do one of these. I'm gonna show you how to do the join and then I'll show you how to do the final border for this particular blanket. So without further ado um, it's an eight millimeter size L crochet hook for the Bernat blanket version. But if you wanna do the Super Saver version this here is done with a five and a half millimeter size I crochet hook and just some super saver yarn. So let's uh, begin and let's get started today. So as I get started today this uh, color that you see is called Baja Blue and so you can see how it changes uh, slowly. So you'll notice that in this if I did more and more squares in the center that the squares in the interior will have a different tone each and every time. So I thought it kind of gives that icy blue look and that was something that I'm going to do. So I'm using this color and then I'm also using Super Saver here this color just spare yarn uh, around and then I paired it with the Bernat Super Saver uh, Bernat Super Value and the color is True Gray. So you can probably find something equivalent to that in Super Saver as well. And then I have a lighter gray that I used as well and it's called Light Gray. <laughs> and that's Bernat uh, Red Heart Super Saver. So those are my color choices today and let's grab the hook and now let's seriously get ready. <laughs> so let's begin and we're gonna create a slip knot to start using your five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook and I'm using the Bernat Super Saver Ombre. So what we have here is that we're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then just join it to the beginning chain with the slip stitch to form the center and keep this so that it's on the outside so that it gets stuck underneath the stitch. So let's move on to round number one. Let's begin round number one. You're gonna chain one and in the center of this ring you are going to place 16 
single crochet. So just count those out together. So we'll, and it'll be tight. So it's going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine, ten. So I'm running out of space. So just pull this whole thing. So I did ten so far. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15 and if you have to pull it again and do 16. So there should be a total of 16 here and then you're just going to join it to the very beginning single crochet and if you went over top of this like you were supposed to then what you can do just turn it over and just cut that so it's out and we're going to move on to round number two. In round number two right where you're sitting you're going to chain one and you'll single crochet into the first stitch. You're now going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five and go right into the very next stitch and single crochet. So I'll tell you what the repeat is for this whole thing. So you'll single crochet in the next one and then chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and then single crochet in the next and you'll do that all the way around. So just make sure that you got two single crochets in a row before you're doing this chain five. It, that's a great indication and you should have a total of eight of these chain fives when you get around. So please do that. This is round number two. So coming to the end of number two and doing my last chain five with the single crochet in the next one and then that's it. So you wanna slip stitch to the very beginning. You should be able to count eight of those chain five uh, loops that are going all the way around. So just slip stitch to the first one and let's move on to round number three. In round number three we're going to be tracing around these uh, loops here that you see. So to do that you're going to chain one to start and you're gonna go right into the loop itself in single crochet and then chain three, one, two, three, double crochet into that same loop then and then chain three, one, two, three and single crochet in that same loop. So let's recap what's happened. Single crochet, chain three, double crochet, chain three, single crochet. That's in the loop. To get to the next loop all you need to do then is to chain two, one and two and then jump again. So let's do another loop. So single crochet, chain three, double crochet, chain three and then single crochet and then to jump to the next loop chain two and start that all over again. So please do this for round number three. When you get all the way back around you've chained two to jump over and you're just going to jump over to the first single crochet and slip stitch it there. And that concluded round number three. Let's move on to round number four. In round number four right where you're sitting you're going to chain one and you're going to concentrate on the chain three that is before the double crochet and after the double crochet and you'll be jumping over that with a chain two. So let's just start. So going up the first side, the chain three, making your way to the double crochet, you'll put three double, cro uh, three single crochets in a row. Then chain two to jump over that and then come down the other side after the double crochet and that's three double crochets there. So, or sorry, three single crochets. So one, two and three. Now in this chain two that is between them just do one single crochet. So let's review again. So going up is going to be three single crochets. Then chain two to jump over the top of there and then coming down the other side three single crochets. So one, two, three and then single crochet into the chain two that is between the petals. So please do this all the way around. This is round number four. When you get back around in number four you've done the single crochet in the chain two that joins them and then you're just going to slip stitch to the first single crochet that started that round and that was round number four. Let's move on to round number five. In round number five we are going to start making a round circle out of this. It already is kind of a round circle but it's gonna be even more and so we're going to begin by chaining six and that will be counted as a double crochet and a chain three space. So just chain six. So one, two, three, that's a double crochet. Four, five, six is a chain three space. Just remember that. 
Now you're gonna immediately jump, jump to the point where the chain two is and you're going to put in two single crochets and then you are going to chain three, one, two, three and then come down in between and it's a single crochet and that's going to be a double crochet. Chain three to move on and then you're back at the peak again. So the peak here is two single crochets. So one and two and then moving on again. So if you think about it, the double crochets are when it sinks back into the between the petals and the two single crochets are then on the tops of the petals. So one, two, three, double crochet in between the petals and the single crochet and then one, two, three, put the two single crochets in the chain two that is on the top of the petal. Please do that all the way around for round number five. When you come back around, you remember you chain six, so you're gonna go to the third chain of the six. So you've chained three to reach on over and just slip stitched over there. So you kind of have this round circle happening at this time. So we're now going to convert to a square as we move on to round number six. In round number six, we're now going to convert ourselves into a square. We're also going to be introducing the Jacob's Ladder chaining that is required. So when we go to start this, we're not starting on the corner and actually let me just show you the, the diagram where we are and make sure that you're on the right track. So when we look at the diagram, we're right here and we're about to chain one and put four single crochets in this chain three space. We're gonna jump over the two singles and put four single crochets in the next chain three space. The next chain three space will have two singles and then a half double and then a double and then the first um, single crochet will have two double crochets and this is a chain ten and you'll chain the ten and you'll start on the single crochet of the one after it and then you'll put your two doubles and then in the space it'll be a double, a half and two singles and then you got four singles four singles and then you get bigger again. So where we are here is when we go to finish this round, we're actually in partially through the beginning of a side but after this we're always gonna start on the edging and that's where you can change the colors if you want to. So if you're not gonna change colors, anything that you would like to do, just continue to build up and just make sure you watch those corners. Uh, the one th corner that you have to watch for the most is on round number seven. There's not an increase. See how there's two um, half double crochets in the one that's causing an increase but it does not happen right here on round number seven and so we'll cover that when we get there. So just keep an eye on that. Let's begin round number six. So round number six right where we are just chain up one and come to the first chain three space and put in four single crochets. So one, two, three and four. Jump over the two single crochets and then put four singles on the other side of it. So one, two, three, four and now we're gonna make our way to the corner. So the next space here is going to be two singles first, then a half and then a double. And now the two single crochets here are the corner. So the first one is gonna be the corner before we um, before we do our chain ten. So you're gonna put two double crochets there and now chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and then coming back into the next single crochet just do a double and make sure you put two double crochets in that same one. So we're gonna get smaller again. So the first space has a double crochet first then a half and then two singles. Come to the next two spaces in a row and those are each be four single crochets. So jumping over the, the two singles in the middle. Okay, and so we're gonna make ourselves to the corner again. So the first two are singles, then a half and then a double and now the next two single crochets are your corner. So you'll put in your two double crochets to start and then chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 
and then the next single has two doubles in it and then you'll get smaller again in the next space out. So the next space is going to be a double then a half and then two singles. So I want you to repeat this all the way around if you need to reverse the video. Now's the time to do it and you can see that it will be ending up into a square after this. So let me uh, just continue along and I'll be right back in a moment to take you to round number seven. So I'm coming all the way around. This is the uh, coming out of the corner and so I want a slip stitch. So in the particular one that I'm doing right now is that I wanted this color to stay on one more time but technically in the pattern it changed color completely. So if you're going to change the color completely you're gonna start in just after this um, loop but for me what I wanted to do is that I wanna continue this color up and so I want it not to fasten off. So you have to decide whether you're going to start here with the new color or just stay on with the new or with the same color and continue just one more round. It's your call and it's good either way. So as we move on to round number seven if you're going to start off in the first one here you're just going to just chain three and then starting in the next one you'll just double crochet yourself in each stitch all the way across and then right to the end and there's no increasing on round number seven as I talked about earlier. Then you'll chain ten and then you'll jump to the other double crochet on the other side. If you're gonna continue the same color and you haven't fastened off just chain three that counts as your first double crochet and immediately just come into your next stitch and just double crochet yourself all the way to the to the corner. Once you get to the stitch just before the corner you're going to chain ten. Okay so you got that one here so it's in and then chain ten. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let it hold and come to the double crochet just after the corner and just double crochet. There's no increasing on the corners in this round and so you get the first one in and immediately go into the rest of them all the way. So I, I need you to do this all the way around for round number seven and I will be eliminating this color at the end of this round and I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm coming around and I'm just going to attach it to there. So if you were uh, starting the new color on the edge here the chain 10 would then be the ending and that's where you would do your slip stitch. So I am going to end this color now and I'm going to move on to round number eight and nine which are both identical but they're just using different colors. So I'll show you round number eight and nine in a moment. Rounds number eight and nine are both exactly the same so I'll just show it once. So you're just going to take your new yarn. So both of them are a different color round. Again if you don't want that just keep the same color. It's up to you. And so you're going to attach to the first double crochet after a chain 10. So we're not worrying about those chains at this moment. So round number eight and nine are both the same. So you're just gonna attach and then chain three. That'll count as your first double crochet and in the same stitch you are going to double crochet again. So there's your increase. So then you're going to work your way all the way across to the next corner. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm getting all the way to the first corner. So the stitch before the chain 10 is going to have two double crochets for an increase and then you're still going to chain your 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10 and then just come over to the other double crochet on the other side of the chain 10 here and you're going to place in two double crochet. So one and two and then just double crochet yourself across to the next corner and then do the same thing. So you'll do that all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of this round and this will be round number eight and nine. So you'll have to do it one more time after we get round once. So I'll see you back here in a second. So I'm coming around all the way to the round the other side. So you'll finish with the chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. And this is the end. So you'll just slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and end it. So what you need to do then is start another color if you wish. If you wanna keep this color just chain three and then put another double crochet in there and then double crochet across and then make sure you put two at the end. However if you are changing color then this is where you'll wanna do it. So just get rid of this color and then restart again as if you're doing number eight all over again which is technically number nine and then just do that same instruction and I'll see you back here in just a moment and pick you up on round number ten. So please do this same instruction one more time. So I'm just finishing up number nine. So what you should have at this point you should have four chain ten spots here that you see and those will be looped together in the next round. 
if you were not watching me what I would do if I were you is that I would do all squares up until round number 10 which is next and then just let it hold and then when you're ready to start the final borders for each one of them then you can jo uh, join as you go but that's where I would end. So anyway I'll give you more advice later and let's move on to round number 10. In round number 10 what we have to do is we have to start looping these together so that when we go around the outside of this is that the loops will all be in position and crocheted in, into position permanently. But we are going to start here and that's not gonna happen the first time until we get here. So I would wait to loop until you're ready to do it uh, on each square so it doesn't fall out on you. So let's begin round number 10. In round number 10 you're just going to slip stitch and join to the beginning uh, one right after a chain 10 spot and then put two double crochets. So you are still doing the increasing here on the beginning of a end or a beginning of a side and also ending of a side. So you're just going to double crochet yourself all the way to the next corner and when I get there in just a moment I'll show you how to loop through and hold those into position permanently. So I'm approaching the first corner and this is the exciting part at least for me. So you'll put in your two double crochets before heading into the next section. What I would do after you get your two double crochets just chain one and hold. And now you're gonna come here and just kinda hold it out and take the second one and go through. So this is the second one. Go through the first from the back to the front and pull up. Then take the next one and take from the back to the front and then take the final one and then back to the front and it will look like that. So let me just show you again. So you take the first one and then the second one goes from back to front. Then the next one back to front and then the final one. So the final loop is what you're going to grab into. So in the final loop here is that you're going to place in three single crochets. So one, two and three and then chain one. So I chain one before I looped it through because I found it was kind of awkward to chain one be to do it. So I figured it, you might as well get the hook ready. So once you have that done you just come to the first stitch right after and you put in your two double crochet and then double crochet then all the way to the other side and then chain one and re-loop and then put your three single crochets into the end loop, chain one and then start another side. So please do this all the way around for round number 10. So I've now just come all the way around. I did my chain one after the three single crochets so don't forget to do that and now that's it for this color. So if I were you and you were me I would actually finish all of the squares to this level first and because the border rounds are now next. The borders are slightly different from each other because you have to attach. So I use the same color for both of the rounds to do it and you can decide what's going to work for you. So this is where you would hold, get all your squares done. So you'll wanna pull up on these to get the to get the shaping and don't be afraid to block it as well if you want to. So let's uh, begin and we're going to take a look at the borders for each one of these next. So in the instruction what we have here is that we have the edging of the first motif here. Then we have joining two motifs here and then joining three motifs. I would not necessarily, I wouldn't recommend doing three at the same time but again that's your call. So what I would recommend to you is that you wanna be strategic about it. So it is a join as you go. So the first one that we do has to be completely done all the way so that you can have something to attach to. The next one then you would attach to the one side. So the way that I do these kind of concepts is that I always start on the corner and then I go on a clean edge and then I don't join until I get to the first corner and then I do my joining and then I come back around. So I never do it on the very first time. So what I would do then at this point is then just continue just to be strategic and then keep on adding. So in this particular blanket there's only nine squares if you did it burnout blanket style but again it's the same thing. So you just start and then join. Then you'll pick up and when you join the next time you can start here or here, it doesn't really matter but as long as you don't start on the same corner of where the join is. So you could start here, go across and then join and then join. Now when I join I like to join diagonally across so that it really pulls that in and that's a decision that you can make. But once you get here you're going to notice is that this square here will join on two sides. So I would start here, go across, do the join, continue to do the join 
do the diagonal to the join there to pull it through and then continue to join and then come back. And so I would only ever do a total of two sides at one time because I think if you're strategic about it you can do it better. If you decided that you wanted to do three sides then your blanket would probably look something like this where you would have the joins and then again you probably want to start here but you gotta be get very careful on that because it is a join corner so you'd have a free corner and then join, 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 join. So I wouldn't recommend this particular one doing the three. I put it in the pattern just because but uh, that's what I would do if I were you. So first motif has to be done completely and let's talk about what it will look like and I have a little diagram for that. So too. in the diagram what we have is that we're going to start off and we're gonna start off in the corner and you're just going to do one single crochet in each of the stitches and on the corner one, the third, the middle one of the grouping of three, you're going to put in three double crochets. You also have to put in a single crochet in this chain one space that you have here. On the next round here, well, this is the joining section so whenever there's nothing to join to then what you're going to do is start off in the corner and then you'll put your three uh, double or single crochets, chain three, skip one stitch, single into the next, chain three, skip one stitch and single. Right here is where you need to watch right here in the, in the center. There's two in there because of balance reasons. So this is being repeated and you will find that there's going to be eight of these chain of these chain uh, three spaces. So there's eight of those. So once you get to the middle then there's another eight of those chain three spaces. So every other stitch is a single crochet. So when you're going to join to a neighbor in the future is that the chain three is replaced by a, a chain and then you're going to slip stitch it to the next motif and then chain and then come back into the motif. So that slip stitching is going to wrap around the neighbor and it doesn't matter like what's if it's this side or this side it's always gonna be the same if you have a join. Even on the corners when you have a corner and this is being joined in it'll be still the one single crochet that you have here and uh, I actually did say that there's three single crochets in the corner. There's only one single crochet, chain three, one single crochet. So what we have here is that when it's joining on this side it's chain chain one and you'll join diagonally with the slip stitch and then chain one and then come back in. So you gotta make sure that these corners are sharing the same stitch in order to keep that balanced. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's begin and I'll show you the first motif first and then I'll show you how to do a join. So let's get our first motif done and then I'll show you how to do a join. So you're gonna come right into the corner, the middle one and you're going to join and slip stitch, chain one and three single crochets into the same one. So all of the motifs are the same on round number one of the edging. So then you'll single crochet in the next, you'll single crochet in the chain one space and then just single crochet in each one of the stitches and then including the chain one space and the middle one here will have three single crochets in it in order to do the turn. So you'll do this around for the motif number, uh, for all of them for the first round and then it's the second round that is either going to be on its own or it's going to be joining and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So get all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming around on the first round. So all of them will be the same. Don't forget that last single crochet before the corner and then join. So let's discuss what we're going to do next because now it's two options. So as we begin the final round this will join as you go if there's something to join to but in the first motif there's there's nothing to join to because it's your first. You go all the way around doing the same instruction. So you're gonna create these loops that will be attaching on all four sides. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate how that's done and then I'm going to then tell you to go all the way around on your first one and then the next time that you come back to this is that I'm going to show you how to then join to a neighbor. So and then I have my sample ready for you as well. So let's begin the second round. To do the second round you're going to then slip stitch to the middle one which is next and then chain one and single crochet into the same one. You're then going to chain three and then single crochet in the same one. So that's officially your corner. So you're gonna chain three, skip the next one, single crochet in the next. And you're looking for eight of these spaces that you'll be able to see. So chain three, skip one, 
and you're roughly looking for the very middle of this. So if you look at this kind of concept, look for the middle before you can really have to count the eight spacing that you see out. Okay, so I'm just basically jumping every other stitch with the chain three in between those. And you don't hear me counting because I'm not because I wouldn't if you weren't watching me because I just throw in a whack here and then I will see. So I see it's getting pretty close to the lining up. So I wanna count and make sure there's eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once I see my eight and I have my single in, I'm going to single crochet in the next and then begin the other eight that will should take you all the way to the other side and you shouldn't have to count those but I would double check anyway. So chaining three, skipping one and over. And the reason why there's two singles in, in the middle, it's because I couldn't figure out at the time because I was not a strong designer on how to change the side counts in order for that to be seamless all the way across without having to do that. So you know you live you learn, um, you take the lessons from you know yesteryear and you apply them to today and so you just get better and better at anything that you practice. So if you're going all the way across chain three, I haven't counted as you can see and you should end up that the middle one is the next one after the final jump over. And there should be eight of those spaces after the two singles. I know that's probably hard to see on screen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight because you know I'm stupid for using the white color. So what you can do is that you will do this corner. So you've come into the corner first as you jumped. You chain three, come back into the same corner and there's officially your corner and then chain three and then keep on moving on. So you're just gonna go all the way around in that same fashion and the entire first motif will have all of this attached. Now the second one will then join as you go. So I'm going to just pull this out and I'm going to then just stop here for now, get that done and I will demonstrate on how to do a join as you go next. So right where I am right now, let's just say that we've gone all the way around, we finished off our first motif and now it's ready for something else. So what we have here is that I have my motifs already starting to be put together. So the first time you'll have nothing, okay, so it was up here. So and then I start joining as I go and I keep adding to it. So in this particular one that I'm about to do is that I'm going to join it to this side and this side at the same time. So as I mentioned in the first part of doing, the, showing you the diagram, I would do it so that your first side is free and clear of any joins and you'll join it starting on the first corner. So what I want to do is then I'm just gonna go all the way to the corner and then I go right in and then right here is when the story changes. So let's just zoom you in and show you that. So right in the corner, so normally I would have chained three and I would have single crocheted back in here but I wanna join. So I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna go to the same spot on the other one and coming from the bottom of it and coming out to the front. So this is the good side up. So I'm going to slip stitch it and then chain one and come back into that same corner piece. So now it's actually joined. So now we're gonna work our way across and we're still looking for those eight sp spaces as well. So we're going to chain one and then you go to the next spot that's available to you and it should just be sequential. And so you're going to slip stitch, chain one and then skipping one, single crochet in the next. So you're still skipping on the one that you're working on. So chain one, slip stitch to the next one, chain one, skip one and come back down. And so you're joining as you go. Most afghans uh, when there is sewing involved most crocheters kind of avoid it. So I designed this so that it was a join as you go so that you can just whip yourself all the way across. Like before I'm still looking for the middle of the motif before I'm really gonna count the number of spaces that I've jumped because I gotta put those silly two crochet, <laughs> uh, single crochets in a row. And if you're paying attention, which you may be or may not be, is that you will see the two double crochets in a row on the other one. So that gives you an indication, right, of where you are. So technically when I come in and skip and I come into this one, 
because the two are right here this should be a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Ta -da! So then sing single crochet the next one after that one, chain one and then start coming into the space after. And then just coming back down. So I like these kind of joints just kind of they're not mindless but they're pretty close to it. Um, there's no sewing involved and it still looks pretty good too and it does match the characteristics of this blanket. So what you have to pay attention to is that when you get to a corner um, even if you're not turning the corner it still has to be joined to the corners. So don't forget to do that. Oops just chain one. Come to the next one and now I'm coming into the corner here so that I need to attach. So when I go to attach I wanna attach on the diagonal here I don't wanna go up or down I wanna go right across. So chain one and go right directly across so, so that it's looping into everything. And then chain one and come back down in. And in this case I have two sides. So if you did not have two sides you would just carry on going around the motif as if it's not attaching to anything. So you're just chaining your threes and then just skipping over the one single crochet. But if you are attaching you're chaining one. So I've already done to the corner here. So then I, I proceed down the other one getting the first empty loop and then start working my way down this side. It's not hard. It's just a matter of being organized and therefore you'll get things done. So whether you're attaching to one side, two side or three side it's all pretty much the same and I'll leave that in your capable hands. So I'm gonna go all the way around and then we're going to commence doing the final border for this particular blanket. So you can do as many squares as you want to. The final border is not affected by it. So when you finally get around to the other side all the way around on any of the samples just make sure that you just slip stitch to the beginning and therefore you have it to go. So after this is ready you can just continually add to it if you want to and then you can just continue your journey. So let's move on and let's get rid of this color and let's start our final border. So let's begin the blanket edging. It's one, two, three and then on this page four, five. So the blanket can be any shape. It could be a rectangle. It could be a square and it doesn't really matter because we're gonna just be playing within those edging and the edging is these chain three spaces. So it's just a matter of just working your way across. So that's a nice thing that, that we are going to be doing and we're going to start and just pick up any corner of the blanket itself and that's where you're going to begin your journey. So in this particular round, round number one, you're gonna just start off in the corner and just slip stitch and in the corners, so you'll just chain one and then put three single crochets. So in the corners of these you'll have three single crochet. In each one of the spaces and that includes joining in between you're going to have two single crochets. So one and two and then you just continually jump to the next one. So one and two and then do that all the way across including the spaces in between the join and what you're going to do then is get yourself to a corner just three single crochets so that you can turn. So when you have the join here, so you got here the join, so there's gonna be two here and two here. So just make sure you're paying attention to that and just make sure you're consistent and that's gonna be what's happening in this particular round. So this is round number one. So I'll see you at the end of this round in a moment. When you get all the way back around then the last space here you're just going to slip stitch to the first stitch here and then you're gonna get rid of this color if you so choose. If you decide that you wanna keep the same color that's up to you. Let me just show you anyway. So you technically would change color just fasten off and then attach to the middle one of here. So if you're not gonna change color just slip stitch to the middle one and then start round number two. So you're just going to chain three and you'll put four more double crochets into that same corner stitch. So with the chain three and those four double crochets that gives you a total number of five which is important. So all you're just going to do then is then you're double crocheting in each stitch all the way to the corner stitch and in the corner put five double crochets in and then continue along down the other side. So it's a nice easy round in that sense and this will be round number two and I'll see you at the end of this round in just a moment. For demonstration reasons just to be transparent I'm not going all, all the way around because basically you just need to know the instruction right? So that's my excuse and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> okay so we're coming all the way back around. You're going to join it to the top of the first chain three. 
and that was the ending of round number two. If you're gonna keep the same color um, you can continue along. If you want to fasten off this is where you'll fasten off and you're going to fasten on to the middle one here of the grouping of five. So if you're not gonna fasten off just slip stitch over to the middle one and if you are gonna fasten off just join to the middle one. Once you have it joined you're going to chain three and then it will be two more double crochet into the same stitch. So the corner stitches on this one is still double crochet but there's only three of them and then there's gonna be one double crochet in each all the way to the other corner. So in the corner stitches it's only three double crochet. So please do this all the way around and this is round number three and then we'll move on to number four in just a moment. So coming up to the end of number three. So round number four is going to be exactly what you just did and uh, it's just a matter of changing color if you want to. Everything is subjective to color really. And so you're just gonna go all the way around and then you're just going to join it to the top of the first chain three. So if you're going to fasten off this is where you'll do it. If not just slip stitch to the middle one and if you're adding new color just slip stitch to the middle one here to start. Chain three and then two double crochets. So the corners are exactly what you already just did. So round three and four are identical. So it's three double crochet in, in each of the corner stitches and one double crochet each around. So we just have one more round to go and that will conclude today's project. So I'll see you at the end of this round in a moment. So here we go and we're just coming all the way back around. This is round number four. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the top. So if you're gonna change color this is where you'll change it. Take it out and then join yourself to the middle one of the gr grouping of three. And if you're not changing color just slip stitch on over. So the very final round number five is simple. Just chain up one and put three single crochets in each of the corner stitches when you get there. And then it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches then all the way around. Okay, so just gotta look for those corners and then that will conclude off the border for this section. So if you did it in multiple colors it looks kinda cool. The solid color I'm almost thinking the blanket could have been awesome in the solid color as well and that's how you finish. So when you get back around just join to the first single crochet with the slip stitch and that's how you would do this entire project. So it's a neat idea. Um, it's actually really quite fun and fabulous. I found the squares are not overwhelming as far as like complex uh, complexity but you can see that you can do a really cool job with this kind of concept and you may want to dampen it, lay it down flat to dry and therefore it'll be blocked and have it in the correct shape. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.